Reach Planner in Google Ads is a tool for advertisers to use to plan out and forecast video campaigns. In this video, we will show you where the Reach Planner tool lives and walk through a setup of just one example. This tool can be used to help you plan out your budgets, compare it to forecasts for a variety of campaign subtypes, but then also look with certain audience targeting options what you can project to see in terms of impressions, frequency, reach, and a variety of other metrics. So with that said, let's jump in. I'm in the Pay Media Pros Google Ads account. Clearly we have the newer interface and I'm choosing our account first for a very specific reason. Right now we are in the overview tab. Then you just wanna go down to tools and then when I click on tools, it automatically drops down planning. And there we see Reach Planner. If it doesn't do that for you, just understand it's under the planning header. So if you click on Reach Planner, in our case, we get this warning. And since we really don't run ads a lot within our own account, it's a smaller account and clearly we don't spend a lot. So in our case, we don't have access to Reach Planner. And Google is letting us know Reach Planner is not available for all accounts and not available in some regions. So if you don't have access to it, and after watching this video, you realize you do want to have access to this tool, hopefully you have a Google rep that you can reach out to or maybe even contact support. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to have to use a client account. So for this account, they spend a good amount every single month. They also utilize almost every kind of campaign type available within Google Ads. Hence, they use a lot of video, which makes sense why they would have access to Reach Planner. But this account hasn't utilized Reach Planner yet. Once they do, we see down here, any plan that we create will be saved right here. So for now, let's go ahead and create a new plan. Based on our account settings, Google knows our location and the currency. You can look at changing it here within Reach Planner if you want to, but in our case, they got our settings right. YouTube will always be a default setting within this plan. You cannot turn this off, but there is the option to get some TV data to compare against YouTube, and that might impact your decision on where your budget should go. Since the last time we made this video many years ago, the TV channel was not an option for Reach Planner. Now that it is, let's include it. And once I did that, it's letting us know we would only be able to use a different currency for YouTube only. Only the US dollar can use YouTube and TV within this tool for now. Now that's set, let's go to next. The first row is literally what we just did on the last screen. Click on the pencil button if you ever want to edit your channels or your location and currency settings. But here, let's just go right down the line. Let me expand dates. Since this is a planner tool, it's looking ahead into the future. You can probably tell when I'm recording this video because I cannot go back in time. It defeats the whole purpose of this tool. So choose the dates of when you're planning on running this particular campaign. I'm good with May 1st, but let's make it the entire month. Click apply and that updated our dates. Let's move on to demographics. Very basic, age and gender settings. Select the options that you want. If I go back to the beginning date, they give us pretty specific options. See how it jumps from 18 to 21? These are in here, just like your targeting settings within the campaign. We cannot type in our own within this planner, as well as when we're setting up a campaign, like some of us are used to with Meta. Next, you can look at diving into sub-locations. Comscore is a measurement company. That was the default selection. Looking at the entire United States, but if I go down to choose your own sublocation, we see a variety of DMAs based within my country location that I have selected. You can check multiple, whichever ones will apply to where you want to show, because it also fits with the TV channel that we're trying to compare to. But I'm going to leave it all as United States. Next, choose your optimization scenario. Are you looking to reallocate some of your TV budget to YouTube? Or are you going to keep TV the same? and you're just adding YouTube as an additional channel, maybe you have some new budget to test. This is here because we did select and add linear TV to our channel settings. I'm just gonna pretend we're reallocating some of the TV budget to YouTube. Next, going down, start building your audience. Assuming this is a lot of the targeting options that we get when we create YouTube campaigns within Google. If you wanna watch a video about targeting options for YouTube, you can check it out here, but understand that the video link I just shared above we'll have way more options that you can target than what's available within Reach Planner. So I went ahead and just clicked on Browse, the main audience setting, choose your affinity audiences if you want, in market and life events, your data segments, looking at potential remarketing or your customer lists. I'm gonna add these to the mix. Go back up to website visitors and that's fine. If you have any custom segments built, ones that you have created yourself with an audience manager, choose those, but I would say make sure that these are custom segments where you have selected the setting of must be on Google properties. If we're talking about YouTube advertising here, we wanna make sure that's included. And then with lookalike segments going away, don't need to worry about it in this case. But next we can look at lineups. This is another targeting setting for video campaigns within Google Ads. 
If you see this section to the side, these are lineups that can appear on YouTube or Google's video partners. So if you expand some of these, they really are themed categories. For this particular client, none of them are really gonna make sense. But you see a variety of sports, entertainment, news, there's some business things here, movies, music. There's a variety to choose from. Go look it up yourself. There is the search function here. Oops, sorry about that. Keep browsing if you need to, but then you can add those to the mix. Now, one thing I should clarify is that I understand I just chose retargeting and customer lists. Typically, when you're building out these reach planners, you are looking at more of an awareness type of campaign. You're looking at expanding your reach, hence the reach planner. If you have a large enough retargeting audience where you still feel like you want to get back in front of them with video, go ahead. But I still think this tool is best suited for discovering newer audiences that may not be as familiar with who you are. Okay, next we can go to devices, typical ones that we're used to. And then this frequency cap, if you want to add it within your settings, we do have another video about frequency capping and the differences between video and display campaigns. You can check that video here. Next, we see an option for you to essentially choose your video campaign subtype. Pretty much letting Reach Planner know that when you do build out this campaign, this is the type of campaign that you're looking to build. If you're looking for more reach, more video completions, maximizing views, getting conversions, or creating a campaign without a goals guidance. In this case, for this example, I'm just going to choose maximize views. Here it just breaks down the campaign subtype a little bit more. I know there's different settings. If you do choose the action focused one, you can adjust conversion rate settings. So pretty much you can tell Google on average when we run these type of video campaigns that are conversion focused, this is our average conversion rate. You can plug that into Reach Planner. So when it does give you the numbers at the end, it's going to be more in line in terms of the average that you're already seeing. But since we did add TV lineups, we get to adjust our TV campaigns a little bit. Since this account doesn't have an actual TV campaign that we can add here, if I chose a specific campaign, I'm going to have to use a sample campaign for this one. So then you can plug in on average what you're kind of paying for a TV campaign change the numbers a little bit so you can choose between CPM or your target rating point. Past few clients that we've worked with have been more CPM focused. I'm just going to leave it as is and then we can view the forecast. If you look up above in this unsaved plan, all of the settings that we just went over are up here. If you ever need to make any adjustments, click on the pencil buttons or there's drop downs where you can adjust those settings. Don't need to access the course, going to dismiss this now. And there we get forecasts of our potential plan. And notice that the TV data was provided by Comscore. For the TV comparison, since I chose CPM, that's what it's showing me. So the target rating points aren't going to be included. But metrics here, right now it's starting on awareness. That is what I chose for the campaign subtype. But Google was nice enough to let you change the options. So now we see with consideration, total amount of views and CPV, some additional information. Not sure what they're going to show for action. Yeah, because I didn't really give them any conversion data, so that one's not as helpful. So for right now, things are looking one to one, because look at our budget allocation pretty much still almost all going to TV. Let me move this slider. If we split our budget evenly between YouTube and TV versus 99% TV, there we see a difference in the plan of what to expect. The blue line is our plan for the 50-50 split, and the dotted line is the comparison plan for 100% TV. We're looking at the reach, comparing the two. You can look at views, conversions, which we didn't choose anything for it. Looking at potential channel overlap, nothing big with the settings there demographic differences between the two, and then device. And then scrolling to the bottom, we see a summary of the comparison again. We're comparing the view campaign that I was starting to create in Reach Planner versus the TV campaign. Understand that the date range is different. The total budget is the same. Rolling over, notice that the reach is different on target frequency, very different. Cost per reach is higher in this video campaign, but then within these metrics, we're kind of comparing two different things. Now understand, that with this comparison, it's just an example. I'm pulling a sample campaign, not one that this client has actually run. If you are actually currently running TV campaigns, you're gonna see the metrics here are gonna be much more valuable for you. So if you're just watching this demo being like, well, it looks like TV's the way better route. I was like, well, it's really not a fair comparison. I just wanted to show you what you could do if you wanted to add TV with your Reach Planner plan. If you do click on your option, we're looking at everything that I already have set up. This is mainly just for you to view. Can't really change anything. But if you need to save this plan for later, go ahead and save it. Name it whatever. So that once we go back to the main Reach Planner page, there's our plan. I could click on it, remove it if I want to, or if I go into it again, I can go ahead, make my changes, resave it. Going up to the More button here, I could download the plan to share it, remove the plan from here. Or if you want to go ahead and create another one with minor adjustments made to the original plan, you can copy it. 
You can rename it, save a copy, go back into the new one, and start editing the new one to maybe come up with a new plan just to see how the numbers change. This could be updating your targeting settings, updating the campaign subtype to see what type of video campaign you may want to actually create within Google Ads when you're implementing this plan. If I cancel out of here, that is a pretty high level overview of what Reach Planner can do. If you really are invested in video campaigns and you have specific view goals, impression goals, reach goals that you're trying to hit, or this is a common scenario, your boss has very lofty goals that you must hit. Put the potential plan within Reach Planner. See if those goals are achievable. Do you think you can hit it with the target audience your boss wants to reach? Do you think you can hit it with the budget that you're going to have for this campaign and the date run for the campaign? And as we can saw, you can export the information to show your team potential numbers to expect. Is it possible to reach these goals? If not, what adjustments are you going to have to make to your campaign targeting, maybe your campaign subtype, or maybe your budget to be able to realistically hit those goals? There are a lot of levers that you can pull with this campaign to kind of adjust those numbers. So it's something that you may have to play around with a little bit. I only showed you one example, but if you have any other questions on Reach Planner, feel free to ask in the comments. But if you still don't see it within your account, I can't help you there. You're going to have to reach out to a Google rep. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.